Hi, my name is Chin from Open Ink Stand, and this is a review of John Mottishaw's Spencerian Grind on a Namiki Falcon pen from the point of view of a calligrapher. Now, of course, I'm going to be a little biased and say that I do prefer a dip nib, but I'm also a fountain pen fan, and so I would like to uh, show you what I feel about this pen and how it compares to other methods of learning Spencerian script. Um, I have a previous video that shows the differences between the uh, Spencerian pen and a stock Namiki Falcon and both of them flex. However, the Spencerian ground pen is supposed to flex in a way that emulates Spencerian script. So, um, before I start, I would like to show you some uh, scripts of um, the past. So, not many people know that there's a difference between these scripts. This is Spencerian script from the Spencerian brothers themselves. So, you can see that it's very fine very neat and not many crazy flourishes and the uh, shading is very sparing sparingly done only a few and perhaps the capitals and an accent here and there and it's quite um, conservative now let's compare that with Spencerian lady's hand. Similarly, it's also quite conservative with extra flourishes. See, it goes like that and like that. Um, however, the shades is still quite thin compared to the fine lines. So it's still pretty, pretty conservative. Now I'm going to show you ornamental penmanship, which is kind of like Spencerian on steroids. This is shaded script. It's um, it's a little crazy, <laughs> very thick, very thick shades, and even on the um, writing, you can see that the difference between the shades. And the fine lines is quite dramatic. This pen would not be able to replicate something like that. In, no, just no. It can do something like that, but it would not be able to do such a thick shade like that without significant touching up. So, and this is. Um, Spencerian capitals and a shaded script like that. So this pen, again, would not be able to do something like that. Uh, you could try, but it's not going to be as neat. It could possibly do something like that, where the shades are not very thick. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's that... Um, if the shades is very thin, this this pen can do it. It can do this. It can also do this. It could kind of, sort of do something like that. This it, it is kind of pushing it. This, I have my doubts. Uh, you could try. But something like that, I believe, would just completely ruin the pen. So um, now we know that what it's capable of and what it's not capable of. This is just based on the limitations of the pen itself. So it's not that uh, it cannot, it's not that it, um, it's not a good pen, it's a very good pen, it's just that it's a fountain pen with a gold nib and there are certain limitations that one can do with it. 
So let's try writing like that. It's very fine writing. I'm not going to apply any pressure. So if you just want to write something like that, just very clean letter, no fancy goings on, it's perfectly capable of it. Even a little shading is fine. Um, I've stated in the previous video that one should always shade holding the pen like that and not like that. Because if you do this, the tine on the right side will be dragged along much forcefully than the tine on the left and that would spring this tine. So this is not very good. If you shade like that, both tines would be spread equally and this would not exert as much force on either tines. Also the shade that you get is cleaner. So I'm going to write Something like that. It's nice and clean. And you don't exert very much pressure and, and it's very pleasing to write with and it will not tax the pen very much. So if you want to learn penmanship like this, it's perfectly fine. Um this is actually kind of close to um, business penmanship and business penmanship is kind of like this Oops. like that little to no pressure still very beautiful and uses very fine lines so this pen can execute this perfectly fine This is from the uh, Palmer's Penmanship book. You can find it online for for free actually. And business penmanship is actually very easy to learn and you can use any kind of um, thin pen with it. But the uh, selling point of this pen is that it has the flex. So if you choose, you can just write without any flex. And you can write this all day, it's perfectly fine. But if you want to, uh, to, uh, add some pizzazz you can always add a little accent here and there this adds a little extra to your pens so if you want to learn to write something like that this pen is fine if you want to learn ladies hand this pen is fine too it can achieve 
these kind of shades. It's perfectly fine. And uh, remember, these shades are done very sparingly. I'm not very used to writing in ladies' hands. This pen is fine for writing that. It could also kind of sort of write in this style. And this is the Madara's script. And Madara's is a very famous penman who is famous for adding a lot of shades in his writing. But, um, and the shades are very dramatic, which makes it very attractive. However, it's quite precise and I feel it's difficult to replicate a script like that using a, a limited pen like this. You could get the general Um, it's not as precise as you can see on his example the thick and thin is very apparent but on this pen it's still quite limited but if you were to attempt it using a dip nib you would have more success I'm going to be using a Leonard principle it's a nib that you can find easily online. So you can already see that the fine lines is much finer. And the uh, shade is much easier to achieve. Because with this pen, I have to press pretty hard to achieve the shades. And that influences the uh, fineness of the writing. But with the deep nib, I don't have to press very hard to achieve the shades. So I can concentrate on the writing, thus resulting in a much cleaner look. Quite a difference. And of course, with a dip nib, you can attempt things like that. One last try. Much better.
So um, the difference is quite apparent. This nib is it's okay for uh, casual practice, but if you want to learn something like that, that requires such a great difference between thick and thin, you just cannot beat a dip nib. And unfortunately, I do not know of any fountain pen that can replicate such a um, thick and thin difference as a dip nib. And a dip nib is like $2 tops, $3 maybe. And a holder, you can find a holder for like $14, $15 you know, for a basic one. And ink is maybe $10, so for about 50 bucks you can have a dip nib that can achieve something like that. This pen is, I don't know, almost two, three hundred dollars and it's convenient for everyday writing but I wouldn't use it for something like that. If you have the money, this pen is wonderful um, but if you want to practice ornamental penmanship or something like that, you simply cannot beat a dip nib. So if you want to, if you have time to sit at home and study this, you should buy this. If you just want to uh, casually write a letter to a friend or something just like that, you can buy this and use it at, um, at a coffee shop or something. Now this is quite expensive and if you want to learn business penmanship, something like that, without spending hundreds of dollars, it's possible to just buy a good old XXF or extra extra fine nib for very cheap. I This is a pilot. Um, or a penmanship I don't remember but I remember it was like eight dollars and it's very fine Japanese fountain pens tend to be much finer so I would recommend them if you are looking for fineness However, this pen is stiff as, as a rock. There is no shading. But if you're going to learn business penmanship, you don't need to use shading anyway. And with this pen, or any other fine pen, it's perfectly possible to learn Palmer's or any other kind of business penmanship. They do not use any kind of flexing. So I would like to recap between these three pens. Um, if you want to do just uh, regular writing you can carry anywhere with you, you don't have to worry about it. And you want to learn um, business penmanship without any shading, then any any regular extra extra fine pen is, is perfect. You can even use a gel pen or a 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 gel pen and you'll be fine. If you want to learn a little bit of shading, and you have the money to burn, then um, the Spencerian grind pen is, is perfectly fine. It's a very nice pen to carry around and you can use all sorts of colors in it too, like color ink. And you can achieve writing like that or like that 
or even you know capitals like that if you want of course it would take some practice However, you run the risk of it springing. And um, if you're not familiar with fine pens and a fine hand in your writing, you, you may spring a pen. So yes, you can practice some forms with this pen. Although it's um, and you can achieve some good flags with it, it's it's always um, distracting to me how I have to keep worrying about not trying to spring it. So for me, that's a drawback. So I, I use it primarily for for uh, writing letters or something not too taxing. Otherwise, I might uh, spring it. And for me, that's a valid concern because it's an expensive pen, and to spring it would be quite a shame. Yeah. But to play with, this is a great pen. Um, if I lost this pen or I, I I ruined it, I may have to think twice about buying another one. I don't regret it. I love it, but it's I think the pen itself costs 140, and the modification costs ex an extra 100 something. So it's quite a lot of money to spend for uh, playing around. Um, I would have to think about getting another one. If you are uh, serious about learning stuff like that or penmanship or ornamental penmanship, your best bet would be to use a dip nib. In my opinion, it's easier to learn ornamental penmanship. or calligraphy using the tools that the masters used, which is a dip nib. But of course, there's a different, different needs for everyone. Um, oops. Um, so, if you want to learn something like that, or something like that or anything really or like that or you know even that especially that you would have to use a dip nib um, but if you want to learn something very simple which is just like business penmanship you can use anything you can just use this which is the, the eight dollar extra extra fine pen so I hope this um, review has been helpful. They are all very good pens. It's just different circumstances and different different needs. Mm. This can do this and this. This can do this. Um, I guess it will be like that. So, um, in my opinion, this would be the best tool to use. This would be great, you know, for carrying around and writing letters outside the house. And this is great too, for uh, regular use. I hope this has been helpful and um, 
Thank you for watching and you can always send me any questions or in the comments or go to my website at openinkstand.com and I will answer any questions that you may have. Thanks.